We got uh, still standing up with Craig Shoemaker with Jenica Berger. And here we go. Jenica, Jenica, Jenica. I Marsha, Marsha. I just Marcia. have to start right off. I love you. I love you. I love you for a long time. You're one of those people, and I want people to hear this for your own life. A lot of this show is about the turnaround. Yeah. It's called Still Standing Up. We're still standing up. And you and I have been standing up a long time. <laughs> and I just want to say this to people. There's some people, you don't have to see them every day. You can see them every decade. You can see them every 20 years. And you love them. Yeah. There's a resonance of love that is so... It's a common... It's a com we're from a common cloth. Cut from a common cloth, not think, a cloth. I think it's more than that. I do think it's more ethereal or divine. There's just some people you're connected with. It does, you don't even have to have anything in common with them where you can't speak for years. I didn't speak to you for years. But there's nothing... There's no reason. There's no rhyme. But there's just this person I go... I run into you on the street. Love her. <laughs> Love. <laughs> You know. Love. <laughs> I know. I talk like Philly now and then. Love. I got love. love. I got love. I got a, love an fat and with, a cheesesteak. With, with an F. <laughs> I want a love and cheesesteak. But you are one of those people. Uh, I could dissect it if I could. It's just some people you know. It's in their background. It's in their genes that there's something you connect with on a higher level. Yeah. And that's what it is. Maybe you have some theories because I think you love me back. I love you back. <laughs> I love Craig Shoemaker, not Shoemaker. <laughs> He's a shoemaker. Not uh, a marker. Um, I, I don't have any theories on it other no. than... You have those people though. Oh, so many. So many. Um, I don't have a lot of people in business like that. But I, we, have a common, we have a common thread. Yeah. I mean, what's with the cloth thread? I'm thinking about fabrics today. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, no, I just think, I think there's a, I think that I relate to, um, there's two people that I love. Okay. The wounded, disappointed <laughs> schmucks. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> So I find Josh. You said that very fast. You my had, husband you says, like, you saw where I was going with that. I'm going, oh my yeah, yeah. God, she's calling Thanks me a, so much. a wounded death. Thanks. Come on my show and insult me. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, right out of the gate. This is why I love you, Craig, because you're desperate, needy. To, I'm throwing in other words. God size hole. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, my husband, how people say, only you shoe. My yeah. husband's like, where do you find them? <laughs> Because, I mean, it, it'll be like the one mom on the yeah, first day yeah, of kindergarten yeah. in the back. I'll like her shorts. And she's not nice. She's not friendly. She's not kind. And I just she's go, wounded. hey, what are you doing Saturday? Want to come over for a play date? She's wounded. And wounded. I bet you took in birds, uh, birds no, when you were a kid, squirrels it's, with it's, a limp. It's more the, I love animals. So I'm always rescuing. You're taking them in. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's the disappointed. And I think uh, that's like, to me, so funny that I find somebody that's just innately disappointed in life. Is this for life. a bit or is this? No, this is real. I, I was just thought about it when you said it. And then the other type of person I love is the dreamer, the hopeful, oh. and the person who can turn it around. I have two sets. I of hope I'm the second one. Or maybe a combination then of both. Then there's a third. No, no third. My, my kids actually have a nickname for me, Opto, for optimistic. I love that. I am sometimes overly optimistic i think that i and you I can see, never be too hopeful i see the good in people that's good but it's no it's not so you're like anne frank it's not good <laughs> yes exactly i burnt my ear answering the iron no that's not anne frank <laughs> that's, that's sir <laughs> I got my, that's awful i got her mixed up with helen keller <laughs> <laughs> Same era. That's the worst. That's the worst. <laughs> Frankie Ann. That's the is, worst uh, mix up in, in, in television Ann's history. About to spit up her. I, uh, it drink. was so bad. I'm actually thinking about retaking that <laughs> because I I'm a pretty smart guy. Oh, that I was think one you of the leave it. one of the dumbest things I've I ever said. I think you said. should leave it. That's and like I went with knowing. an old joke. Answered the iron from fifth grade. Helen Keller answered the iron, and I I could I I superimposed her. With Anne Frank, who's hiding from the Nazis. They looked alike, <laughs> from what we've seen. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Let's reset that one. So, I'm Anne Frank. Is that what you said? 
you said you believe in in good in people, and I said like Anne Frank. Yeah, I do, it, but it gets in the way sometimes. But I guess it doesn't if you go to, to which this show is about. If you go to the discovery that happens after the pain, then it's good. After the pain of finding them out or finding out that they're really up to no good and they're really, you're trying to find the good in them, which there is good in everyone. Would you agree with that? Good in everyone. I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever met pure evil. No. I've yeah. never met an evil person. <gasps> I think every, I, I, oh. I, I, I. Oh, wow. You haven't lived. I think I've, but I spent. <laughs> That's another my day. And the, that's my I was friends with Lucifer. That's my third category. Beelzebub was my my fraternity <laughs> brother. I that's anybody my use, who I, uses the word Beelzebub is a is fine in my book. Do I get a do I get a take back on the Anne Frank mixed up yes. with Alan Keller on I, that? I wasn't judging you because my brain went right there with you. Plenty, believe me. Because I all of a sudden I thought maybe I forgot history. <laughs> and messed it up. Wow. Oh, that's good. You were so convincing. You did pause. Answer. I went, because <laughs> my brain said, that's someone from that era. Did Anne Frank have an iron in the attic? <laughs> yeah, like it was Already like. close up there. With the and Van the Dams and the. And there wasn't even phones. <laughs> so I don't know what you. Van Dams had a hot iron. <laughs> no, what I was thinking of. So <laughs> there are evil people out there. <laughs> but I do believe at the bottom of them is not. Every one of them. We're all born in love, light, and levity. Where I believe that we all are. We are all God's children. Every one of us. Now, you can do the PR campaign on the people that aren't. You can absolutely list all the things that make them evil. I think I'm too stupid to do that. Like, I just... I. No, you're I too start, enlightened. To, you're too enlightened to do that. Or more enlightened. I'm sorry, my sock fell because off. Because, I'm, I'm, my heel is so big. I've grown up. My heel is so big and my sock came off out of nowhere. I've heard a lot of self-deprecating humor with people. I've never heard heel. I've never heard anyone mention their heel is big. And I didn't have a good joke for it. I just it's, realized it's, that my that sock is, fell that off. Is, that is the joke that you that you are actually talking about your heel. I'm so... Everybody else, I have a big nose. I got to have a nose job. I got to get my ears. I so have, don't please. like myself that I'm focused on... Even my heels are big. <laughs> Who has big heels? I've never heard of that in my life. I think I'm wearing my children's sock right now. Let me just that, check. That, Can okay. I check? Yes, yes. Check this out. That's this a child. My, that's a child's sock. That's a child's sock. I'm wearing my, my, my middle daughter's wonder sock. I've never heard anyone mention a big heel before. Is there, I've heard myself called a big heel. That's my first joke, by the way. Was it? What my, was it? Uh, I, I said I was in fifth grade. I had to, to tell some jokes. I was getting beat up big time, like yeah. really beat up. I relate. And I said, uh, right? And I said, uh, hey, did you hear about my shoe factory, shoemaker? <laughs> my, shoe, my shoe factory burnt down. Some big heels started it. And I, and I, go, and I go, a lot of souls were lost. <laughs> boom, boom, comedian. I think you should bring that out tonight. At the Laugh Factory at Netflix is a joke. <laughs> you think I should bring that comedy back? I go, I will reference that it was fifth grade. It was my that was my first joke that I ever told. That's brilliant. I think I had one something they laced up a scheme or something like that. It was some another shoe reference. I just remember. You gotta, my lean, first you gotta joke. lean in. You gotta lean in sometimes, especially yeah. if you're speaking of leaning in. I think you might want to bring this oh, a little, shit. little closer. Shoot. Yes. Shiza. Right. We can curse on here. Uh, so anyway, tell me. What was your first joke and what did it mean for you? Oh, so I, um, so Josh Homme, who was in Queens of the Stone Age, was a football player at Palm Desert High School. For anybody who uh, was in that class, what's up, PD, multiple girls? <laughs> so anyway, um, I didn't make the cheer squad. I didn't make the flag guard. And they took anybody with a unitard, so that was kind of embarrassing. Um Wow. But so I there was an audition for the mascot. So I decided to audition and, and the mascot I, was what? It was an Aztec. Okay. So they had a full headdress, but they didn't have like the suit. So it was like they chose a girl and a boy, mm. I, uh, me. Um I'm not both. I was the right. girl. Okay. And um and I I remember so I'm cheering and screaming and I had all I was just doing bits and all kinds of things. Don't remember what I was talking about at each game. And the only reason I, again, the only reason I wanted to do this is because Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age oh. was on the football team. Oh. So if I was a mascot, near him. I you had a crush on him. Oh, yeah. You wanted to be near him. Near him. Yes. So I went 
all the way oh to God, so, so relate becoming a mascot. Wow. So I said, <laughs> sabotage the bad, the bad to the, the parents sitting in the thing. And this one dad was just like, can you move? Just move. <laughs> big head dress. And I head. said, just give me an A and I'll leave. <laughs> and he goes, A. Like, A. And I go, I lied, I'm Nixon. <laughs> and I got this huge laugh. Hold on, hold on. I lied, I'm Nixon? I'm Nixon. Like I'm like Richard Nixon, the, the yeah. president. You know how he lied? Yeah. <laughs> so the joke, obviously, it went over that well. And that is why I don't do stand-up anymore. Thanks, Craig Schumacher. Maker. Mocker. <laughs> so, wait a minute. I lied, I'm Nixon? Yeah, and then I stayed. Okay. Oh, so I said, oh. give me an A, oh, and, and I'll leave. leave. Oh, oh, and then, and I, then he goes, I he goes A, and, and I go, I, I lied. I'm Nixon. Give me a Z. And, wow. And I got this huge I'm, laugh. I'm and just I kind of looked. That someone as young as you would use a Richard Nixon reference. That's that's what's shocking. I had to me. old hippie dope fiend. They were protesting recovered. Nixon. You yeah. knew all about him. Lying. Yeah, they had me at fifty. What? Oh, that is a little. So I had this like, you know. Yeah. I had this closet of old school references that nobody gave a crap about, <laughs> but older people. Tiny Tim, you pulled out a yes. ukulele. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. That, so I'm finding much more about you than I ever knew. I did not know you were the Aztec, the mascot. The Aztec mascot. Did you keep the helmet, the, the big headdress? No, and I had no school spirit. I literally was there for the thing. Yeah. I, you know, I know that story. I went out for the wrestling team and I was scrawny <laughs> just because Jane Mebbin was a cheerleader. And it was, I was so bad that the coach would say how many lights are burnt out on the ceiling because I was on my back all the time. Oh, my God. So I was on my back. I go, four. <laughs> Give me four light bulbs. And I see Jane going, get up, Craig. And I'm looking at her upside down. I wish I could, Jane. <laughs> you know, please go out with me. And then poof, I hear the pin sound. Oh. And then uh, I just, it, it never worked either. I never, I never was able to get Jane to pay attention to me except for please don't get pinned. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You know, with the things that we'll do. Yeah, and I never got Josh Homme to pay attention to me. Well, now, once he sees this. He's going to drop his life and his <laughs> music career, and I'm going to. Oh, he's, he's in music now. Yeah, he's in Queens of Stone Age. Big band. No. I don't care about Josh Homme. I don't want to talk about him anymore. He's a, he's a big rock star. Is he's, he really? Yes. And you went to school with him. I went to school with him. And he was a dreamboat and played for the football team. He was a dreamboat. We're going to move on from him. We're going to move on from him. because we'll Move on to your dreams. You, So this is a show about turning things around. And I know during the pandemic, you had a bit of a turnaround because of getting nailed your business. You have another business besides yeah. the millions of things that you do, which I also love about you. You're very diverse. Thank you. And <laughs> there's no ceiling on what we can do if you tap into your creator. Nothing. I have to remember that. You do? Mm -hmm. You live it. So you don't need to remember it. You live it. You are one of those people. You'll direct, you'll produce, you'll write, you do comedy, you'll do improv. I wish I had like a direct act. line though. Like I I don't feel a direct line. So I sometimes only feel you wish for that. I do. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna as your now coach, I'm gonna play you coach right coach. now. I'm gonna for, just coach. for now, I wanna yes, tell you. Yes, coach something. Greg. I wanna empower you, inspire you to embrace the potency that you are and it does not have to be in any linear fashion for success it's other people that are labeling you which is limiting there are no labels in human life we don't have a label we don't come from a certain religion or a certain background and, and just own that and have that dictate how we are mm -hmm. No, we're free to think and create and tap into our potency of our creator that has no limits. It's infinite. So why not do anything? And I was about to go down your list of accomplishments of things that you do because you do live like that. Yeah. And you don't want to be any other way. I know we get jealous of the linear people. They have the same job for 40 years and the same you know, the, the career in the same people, husband, wife, or whatever it is. Yeah, very, very, very nice. Very nice. Very for them. nice. Very nice for them. And I am envious sometimes, and I'm sure you are as well. But really, would that send you anywhere? Would that really drive you? Would that in, would that 
resonate with you is to get in that line? No. No. No, exactly. So let's get back to you during COVID when you made an adjustment. Yeah. You got nailed. Yes. Another business that you were doing. So my husband is a chef. Yeah. And we own a catering company called Great Taste Catering. Mm. And he was about to produce uh, an event uh, for the Alzheimer's Association. Mm-hmm. And Annie Lennox was the performer. Um, it's called A Night to Remember. And um, there's they raised a lot of money that night for Alzheimer's Association. And on top of that, he had a party, a bar mitzvah, a, a bride. And there's always a bride. And there's always the bride's mother, which is fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't really have anything to do with the business except cause problems. <laughs> and bring him, you know, business. business. I'm sure you're good at that. But I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to toast. I don't know how to anything. Okay. And um, you can't make toast. I literally can't make toast. Call him up and ask him. It's hilarious. <laughs> like he, he said last night, I said, wonder our middle child's not feeling well, but I got to take holiday to the baseball field. Um, do you want me to stay home and you can take holiday? And yeah. he goes, who's going to cook? Wow. I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't. Are you training the kids to cook? I am i don't think I'd have training in our... Wait a minute. Yeah. Not you training them. Yeah, yeah. You should have them trained to cook. I, I got th- my kids trained now. I, I think that Not there's some kids that yeah. love to cook. Yeah. And my older daughter, True, loves to cook. Following so, in dad's yeah, yeah. footsteps. She's following her own footsteps. She's a musician. She's in New York. There you She's go. She's releasing a song. Her this, own footsteps. Her own footsteps. That are guided by a giant source, right? That Agreed. takes her into, I love cooking, I love music, and I live this type of music. I like to now all of a sudden, I'm a singer. And whatever it is, whatever evolves out of that, once you're tapped in, yeah. she's dialed in already. Yeah. I love it. It's so rad. And you gave her that opportunity by opening her up to that. Yes. By not being linear. Yeah, definitely. I don't. I'm not. I don't know what linear even is. <laughs> no, of course. Ever. Have been. Of course. So anyway, the so pandemic happens. Yeah. Shut the doors. Yeah. Everybody in the bunker. Buy a bunch of bread. We're not going anywhere, right. and we're gonna live, you know, in terror. And I remember stand, standing at my dad. My. my my dad, I called him my dad. Your husband. My husband. Thank oh, you. Wow, who's your daddy? Who your daddy? <laughs> Who your daddy. So uh, my husband, I saw my husband standing in the kitchen, and his phone was just going off one after another. This is canceled. That's canceled. This oh. is canceled. 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 And just the reality of it was that's you know the reality is our income is, is just going done down too, and we have employees, and they have families. Ooh. And we didn't understand the magnitude of it. And I mean, I could do a whole, mm-hmm. I could go on and on about it. It was a, 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 a tri- trying moment. Yeah. And I will say, if I'm nothing in this world, I am good in a crisis. Yeah, I got you. Something just went off and I said, you're going to cook meals for women at home. Meatloaf, mac and cheese, rice potatoes, vegetables. And I said it in that voice, like Brenda Vaccaro. And I was like... And, with, and pointing at him. I did. It was you're like, going to, I was yeah, like, because right. I've never you're seen... possessed. I've never seen The Rock. The He's The Rock in our... I mean, he is a bull. He is a laborious, like, mm. you know... <laughs> Your husband is The Rock. Yes. Except in this case. In this case, I saw... I mean, he was just trying to... The, the yeah. logistics of even getting and the, the codependent and the codependency of the, the disappointing people of all the people that work for you yeah that's a big that was a huge thing i had people uh, employed and it was sorry i can't afford this yeah and it's really sorry i mean it's sad but maybe you're gonna have to go do your thing and do a reset and a reboot yeah i call it a spiritual rebooty call that's what we went through <laughs> <laughs> we had to do some major booty calls this, I'm going to do a spiritual spirit. rebooty call. Yeah, and you did, though. You said, this is what you're going this to do. This is what you're going to do. And he did it. Well, I thought it was hilarious because the first, he was like, okay, okay. And he goes to his computer and he's like, you can choose three appetizers. You could choose this salad. And he's got all these amazing foods and all these amazing menus. And, we're gonna, and I was like, no, and shut the computer. I'm like, vats of food. I want comfort. They want comfort. We're stuck. 
and I don't think he understood it quite right away. Yeah. And so I was like, where's your contacts? Like his contacts were all over, you know, he'd had no mm. social media, no nothing. He just was word of mouth, loyal clients for big events or mm. private catering. Right. And, you know, we, I just remember like starting a Google doc and being like, here's, you know, this famous person's number and that assistant and this and then my friend and then the parents and then the things. And pretty soon we had a delivery business mm. and it was Monday, Wednesday, did and Friday. Did you do the delivery too? I did. I bet you did. I loved it. But see, I, I, can't, to see I can't work too. for the company because I delivered to Laura Dern. Hi, how are you? Da, da, da. <laughs> Gave her things for her kids. Everybody's stuck in their house. Masks. Testing, the whole sure. nose rape, the whole, everything. We're doing all this to drive, <laughs> to give you your food. I give the food, and she goes, just leave it right there by the gate. Exactly. And Laura Dern, and she, we leave it by the gate, and the shepherds came and ate the entire <laughs> thing. So it's like, no matter what I do, I cannot help. Because it's always, you know, only you, Shu. It's like, it's always Jenica. So like, if there's a problem, it's always Jenica. So Josh had to go back in the kitchen and recook the entire entire thing but we ended up making like we started we rehired our staff and it was a really um it was actually a really great time of camaraderie yeah. and and eventually well, people would let you get closer to prevent the shepherds from eating the pie not me the but others <laughs> you stopped delivering well now we're down to one delivery a week on Tuesday. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you're still doing this business. We're still doing the delivery. And as things, I mean, if you can imagine, Craig, oh, we're opening up. Okay. We want an event. We want a wedding. Ah, oh, the cases are rising. We're closing back down. The wedding's canceled. But, you know, um, yeah. bat mitzvah's canceled. Can you do an, a Zoom bat mitzvah? And we'll send the, uh, you know, the food. I remember for the Alzheimer's event, mm. Josh created these beautiful boxes that the attendees mm. that normally would come and deliver the box. And then you watch Annie Lennox sing on, on, on Zoom. So it still happened, but on Zoom. Yeah. The adjustments we made were just... So many adjustments. Yeah. It was, it was kind of miraculous. It really got to show human nature. Human nature has these solutions within them. And when you're up against the wall, that's what happens. What is your uh, spiritual background, religious background? Where do you, where do you come from? Uh, so my mom's Jewish from mm -hmm. the Bronx. My dad's Catholic from Detroit. Which makes you Jewish. <laughs> yes. Yes. It makes it, me Jewish. Well, no, in the faith. Yeah. That it's the mother that decides. Well, my mom never, I mean, there's Jew, Jewish references my whole life. Mm -hmm. He's a schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Gewalt. Connect the joint. Like the it's the best. I'm I'm Fabicina, um, but I I once dated uh, Jennifer Gray, and her dad had the master list of English words that sound Yiddish. And what is it? What? Well, can, you, do you just, remember any? Uh, boyish appeal was one of the top ones. Ladle, <laughs> right? <laughs> These are these are really yeah they're really cool. That's a good party trick. But I, it is it's really cool. And I got rejected on one. To this day, I have a resentment, and I'm one of those people. I'll take it far. I'm going to win this bet. And what was it? They rejected uh, nozzle top. I said, <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, well, what do you call the top of a nozzle? I'm arguing with, and she goes back to the dad. And he goes, no, rejected. It's not a real thing. I go to. The hardware store on Santa Monica Boulevard, and I went in there. I said, "Excuse me, I would like a nozzle top, please." <laughs> and that's when I knew I was rejected because they said well, there's lots of things. In. But I think there is now. I, I really do. I think I looked it up not and long now they've, ago on they've Google. Cut, they've seen the I think light. They have nozzle tops, and now I'm going to go back to Joel Gray and say this needs to go in on the list of, of, uh, of <laughs> English words that sound Yiddish, and you can combine them. Like boyish appeal is one of the best ones. I love that. But I, there is something about Yiddish. It is 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 really well. It's, it's actually so funny. It's at the base. It's at the base of comedy. Yeah. You know when you think Borscht Belt. Yeah. And cat skills. It was all about. It's it's the base of comedy. As a matter of fact, JLTV, Jewish Life Television, we're at the studios here. They they broadcast. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes. I this know. is thrilling. Yes. And why they, do they have such a goy? <laughs> I'm not 
complete. You're not complete. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> my mom marries Jews, <laughs> so she that, is only attracted so, to Jews. So it qualifies me, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so the Jewish Life Television had they broadcast the Goldbergs from the fifties. Not the Goldbergs now. Right. But they literally like these black and white shows. That's what they broadcast. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's usually, you know, George Burns is, and Soupy Sales. All the best. I know Soupy. I love Soupy. Yeah. Soupy yeah. was. Uh, you knew Soupy too, right? Well, I knew his kids. Oh, okay. Actually played on my first album. His kids, people don't realize this. They were really great musicians. Really great. Hunt and Tony Sales. They yeah. played with Tim Machine, which was David Bowie. Yes. This They're has really nothing talented. to do with either one of us. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so... Uh, we do know everyone, though. My spiritual background is that my parents were both higher powered. So, like, they were sober. They had me sober. Not religious. Not religious. Spiritual. They had a, a, a shalom sign with rosary beads and, like, the serenity prayer over the door when you walked in the house. There, and, and everything was a miracle. Everything. Oh, the, you did so well today. That's a miracle. Did I meet your mom was yes. she, was it back in the day? Yes, you did. Yeah, a few times. And um, yeah, very spiritual, a little hippie-ish. Very hippie. <laughs> very. She's like, <laughs> yeah. Patchouli, ban the pat fucking bras. <laughs> she was, a, she yeah. was the leader of that. She was like an edgy hippie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is she still around? No. No, she's, when did she pass? She, um, nine years ago. Nine years ago. Yeah. And but about, what about your dad? He died in 1997, and I've never been the same. Never been the same. Tell us no, about that. I was that. talking about that with um, a friend today. It's once you lose, you know, your parent, your beloved parent. Yeah. There is a piece of me, the reality of not truly knowing where he went, and not ever getting to see, like, like right now, your eye just twitched there's things on my father's face that I could miss. Yeah. That I knew. I Nothing, the smell, the look. He was the more beloved beloved parent for you? Yes. Is that right? Interesting. Oh, yeah. I have he that, was hilarious. I have that with my daughter. You do? Oh, I saw that. I, oh, yeah. right. You hung yeah. out with my daughter. And I, and, and How I funny loved is she? it. She's hysterical. She's unbelievable. She's just born to do this. Yeah. She's from the Borscht Belt. <laughs> You you were actually a witness to what she yes uh, the I I reposted that <laughs> tell, tell people what happened um so Taylor Swift uh, we were at a, an event honoring Craig and it was a really big event yeah and like, they were honoring Craig for his service to it it's um it, CSC Alliance stand yeah. up for a cure yeah and uh. And they started the bidding portion of the evening. Amazing auctioneer, by the way. I love that dude. Oh, by the way, uh, of all the celebrities, yeah, all the celebrities, my daughter's going, I want to meet him. She can care less <laughs> the Oscar winners, Emmys. That's it. So she's, yeah. she's already funny and a producer. She was like, that's the talent. <laughs> that's who I want to meet. He's, yeah, she knows. And she's 10 years old and she was my date. She was so great. And we all sat at also, the Also, you look together. like you have so much fun together. We do. But the auction, ahead of time, she goes, Taylor Swift. She goes, you know, Dad, I'm turning into a Swifty. <laughs> so, that's what she says to me. And then there's a guitar. It's signed, and it said $950. I go, well, that's, that's not bad. But that was the low bid. So then it starts. I have the paddle. And the and paddle's she's, going she's up. Me, she's next to me like this, like looking back at me, looking at the this. auctioneer, <laughs> looking at the auctioneer, back to me, back to the auctioneer. She sees me put the paddle down at $1,500. She goes, put it up, Dad. Put it up, Dad. I want that guitar. And, and she's not a spoiled kid. And you're witnessing this. You were howling. I thought it was hilarious because I thought Watching you screwed her work yourself <laughs> thinking... Because I remember being at an, a school auction and just wanting right. tickets to American Idol or New right. Kids on the Block or right. whatever. And I'd just be like, it starts at 450. And you're just like, maybe I could do it. Yeah, maybe and I could get it at 480. The people, I mean, I thought it was hilarious that you thought you could even play. <laughs> like, I love you. They were honoring you. But that you could even get in the ring with Taylor Swift and this group. 
And I'm not being honored because of all my money. I'm being honored for being of service for free. Exactly. So, I, I, so that's I, I'm, why I'm I was not, like, I'm why not, are you I'm, even I'm bidding? Not Just, big, I'm not big pockets I over here. Nipped. They have multi-millionaires I'm going against with yes. my little paddle. And, I and I'm little Craig Shoemaker. I was brought up very poor. And there I am going I at it. And I went out at like... I can afford $950. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can make my daughter's dream come true. <laughs> I made it to 1500 And then she shoots me a look like, put it up, Dad. And she was serious. How much did that go for? So now it, it, it came. This was the line, though. It comes up. It gets up to $14,000, right? It's up to $14,000. She's looking at me. Put that paddle up. And I finally scream back at her. This is your college education. And she fires back. I'll get a scholarship. <laughs> she is so damn funny. She also had, like, the presence of Jackie Gleason. Like, she was like. Oh, the, the and, faces? And, uh, no, no, no. Like, she was looking at you like, yeah. give it to me. Yeah, yeah. I give it to me. That's exactly right. She was dead set on this damn yeah. guitar. She and still, then... She, she they, still rips on me, but They rolled out two. I know. Remember, they give one and they go, oh, you're in luck. Lowest bidder, 14000 Yeah. We've got another one for 14000 So that just took it over the edge. Oh, I know. And then she double shot me. Uh, she's still talking about it weeks later, by the way. What are you going to do to make it up? I'm not make, doing anything to make it up. Forget, I'll buy a guitar and sing some Taylor Swift songs to her. So oh, that's that, good. So she never likes that's a, Taylor that's Swift an even, again. That's an even. <laughs> She'll never like Taylor Swift again. Compromise. Speaking of that, how are you as a parent? I'm really curious because I haven't hung with you and your kids. What do you like, if you were to be an assessor of you as a parent, what would the assessment say? Well, my assessment of me is that, and no. this is not my children's assessment. I don't want to hear it. What? I want to hear, oh, oh, so, oh, you'll do the assessment of you, but I want it through their eyes, though. Oh, like, through their eyes. Like you as a parent. Well, no, you can do it through your eyes. How, how do you set, do both. Do both, okay. Do both. This Assessing it, you, <laughs> I just thought of this game. <laughs> Who knows how it'll go. With you, it'll probably be great. How do you think you are as a parent? What's your mantra as a parent? What motivates you? Because this society, as you heard my comedy act, is there's a lot of bad parenting out there. And I don't mean bad like, you know, you're the worst, oh, you know, abusive. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just stupid. I love theoretical, that of your show. Theoretical stuff. Yeah. You, it's not going to be scalable or sustainable. They're playing shadow dodgeball where you throw in a shadow. You know, I'm like, go get me a belt to beat your shadow. I mean, this is what I come from. Tell me about you as a parent. Well, first of all, I think being a parent is, I don't, I couldn't do it without my husband. Mm. And so for me, being a parent is one half of a, 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 of a partnership that I'm very lucky. Mm. Uh, he's very present. He's a great father. I had a great father, so I didn't look for, you know, I didn't look for something else. Wow. Um, and um, You are good at casting. <laughs> you cast them. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then. But how um, are you as a parent? As a parent, me, I struggle a lot. Um, With? Before I had a kid, I thought you spank them, you reprimand them. And you mold them. And the minute my daughter came out, my first daughter, True, I went, oh, mm. she's her. I mean, I looked at her. Uh, she, uh, she was having a hard time. She had swallowed her poo, <laughs> her meconium. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All my kids swallow their poo. They, they, really? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, maybe it's the way I push I don't know. It's Something, like, because I haven't never experienced that with any of my It's kids. not poo. It's meconium. It's, I know the, it it's is. a fluid or whatever. Yeah, it's, so it's anyways, I, she looked at me and she went, meh. <laughs> with, a mouthful, I, with a mouthful of mouthful poo. Mouthful of poo. Yeah. And they were like cleaning her on the side. Yeah. And I was looking at her and I went, oh, she's not mine. And You that knew was, that right away. That was a huge thing. It was like, I, I'm here for her. Yeah. She's not mine. Yeah. And then, um, you know. No molding. No molding. No putting them in your, what, what, you know, right. and, and dominating I, them to the point where they're going to right. acquiesce to yeah. whatever you want. 
and I could try. So it's so amazing you got it that early. I got it right away. Like kid one, minute kid one. one. But then kid two came out. Yeah. Kid two. Yeah. I shot a movie called Come See Me. Mm-hmm. And it's the first movie I directed, sold it to Hulu, was, and I filmed it pregnant, and we filmed the birth. And I knew you what... filmed the birth for the movie. We filmed the birth for the movie. In the script. In the script. Well, you, wow, that's, it was really, the that's wild probably card. the first time in history. Um, yeah. It's not and, a documentary. This is a scripted thing, and and you better get the shots down. There's no yes. take two. <laughs> There's no take listen, two. So listen, I, and I got to tell you, it was pretty yeah. amazing because... So Mary Vernu and James Portolacy and Keith Carville produced it. James Portolacy had was doing more than just producing. He was doing the schedule, AD, like everything. And we had this wild card of when I was going to give birth for the story. So the actor Josh Funk was playing my husband, and he had to be on call around the week. It was like I'd go in, check my cervix. They'd be like, you're crowning. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, Josh, are you available? You're not going out of town. I need you to come in. And be my husband in the scene because mm. the baby's going to come. Sure. Le- then a complication occurred, and I knew I had to. Uh, I knew I had to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I knew I had to um, schedule She's our. She's stalling birth. because Frankie in the background was rotating her finger <laughs> 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 with poo on it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I had to schedule. I had to schedule the birth. Anyway, like long story short. She came out in total chaos. We were filming. Yeah. I was focused directing. Um, my AD and my crew and, and everybody came in and said, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And Tawny Katane was playing my sister. She was stuck in traffic. And I wasn't going to get the Which scene you I wanted. write that into the script, though. Yes. But we, yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't focus on her birth. And, I, and I'm... I, I wonder, wow. and her name's Wonder, I wonder if I set her in, in this course of life distracted. In chaos. In chaos. And so my, my mothering with her is very different. I have to, I, I lose my patience. I'm anxious. She's still, anxious. She's, even though you have this awareness, yeah. you still can't do a shift to make a sacred pause and like have a different reaction or... No, action I, that takes I'm older place. and I'm frustrated and I'm not, you know, I'm balancing nine million things. Yeah. And then my third kid, Holiday, was a dream. She's just like literally a holiday. I think Came you should just easy. name your kids what you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Cause, yeah. Because Holiday is. I, I thought about that. Hey, 401k, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, as a parent, I think that I struggle. Um, but I think the, 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 the benefit i have is that i'm willing to learn yeah and i knew instantly you don't spank your kids so i wanted to learn child isn't that um, i found that i didn't know that i could not believe it my first two i spanked the first one a few times next one once and i still remember he vomited he was so shocked he was in a state of shock because he because because you you traumatized him i could not believe that i was doing that yeah and that's when i'm that was my moment of clarity. Yeah. Where I went, there's no good that comes out of this. Yeah. And I don't care what anyone says, all this spoil the rod, spoil the rod, <laughs> spoil, spoil the child, spare the rod, or spare the, whatever it is, spoil the child. I am I can assure people. And by the way, I don't know if you've read my Facebook post. Yeah. It's been affirmed for me with my dog. Our dog was really, really traumatized, uh, literally about to be euthanized, a street dog, kennel, which that's PTSD if you ever, yeah. oh my God, it's horrible. These kennels and all night, I, I can't, I could be there for 20 minutes with the barking. Imagine that and then would see another dog and the hair would go up and absolutely flipped out. And I had a trainer that was like, you know, aggressive, pulled a chain and then electric, the punishment version. And I have to tell you, I said, no, no more. And I said, I'm going to do this myself. And I did it with patience. I did it with um, taking a sacred pause when I'm ready to try to control, letting go, surrendering. All these spiritual principles, I put them all into this dog, this rescue dog, who's part mostly pit bull, by the way. Mm. And they have their own DNA. I mean, it's like scary when they look like they're going to kill the other animal, not people. She's really good. And I have to tell you, I'm just seeing it. It's a miracle 
what has happened. I reward her every time she passes a dog without flipping out. I reward her, and it worked. She now, in the last week, three times we've been at outdoor restaurants with other dogs next, right next to her. And it's gone, right. She's just, it's, it's beyond belief. And it shows me, again, it affirms, and these two have never even, I've never come close to touching Chloe or Jackson in that way. My first child, who, by the way, doesn't speak to me. I was wondering what the irony is in that, right? I, and I, by the way, I was not, you know, I did a few times because I really wanted them to know my power. That was one of the reasons for doing it. This kid's going to know my power. He's fighting me back, and he's really, he did some awful things to me. And, you know, I'm, I, that sounds horrible, but, you know, I, that was my reaction. So, no, you're not going to do this. And now I've learned. You can have better control, if you will, by peace and serenity and spirit and being guided and taking that spiritus, the Latin word for breath, take that spiritus and watch what happens. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if, if my house is in order, the house is more in order. Absolutely. I When you have your practice. Right, when I practice and... Yeah. and, and, and when you have a house of two, you know, two dogs, a hamster, the thing, got to get them to school, blah, 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 three kids, this one there, this one there, this one, this one, doing that, um, sometimes that falls to the wayside. And the greatest gift I have, I think, is um, if I can, pause. Well, you always can. Not always. No, no, Not you always it. can. Mm. Of course you can. Right. And I find that everything, it's like uh, there's a St. Francis prayer, right? You yeah. Know, but that, that prayer is all about contrary action. That's what happens. This contrary action is evolved out of taking that pause, the breath, whatever it is. And every single time, if, if it's left to me, I'm going to lie, cheat, steal, get over, bully, and all those things. That could be, the, that's me. Like, I've been trained in that, you know, like a Philadelphian. You know, I got a little, I know you dated a Philadelphian. You know what it's like. Yeah. I mean, it's a stubbornness. It's a, yeah. it, it really, it takes over. But really who we truly are, we're talking about it earlier, about the evil thing is who we truly are is love, light, and levity. If you take that breath, the only thing that can result is another contrary action to the way you, way you would have been, way you would have handled it. So that's the choice. It's a choice, but it's also, there's personalities, you know, like my middle yeah. child's a different personality than true or holiday. Wonder is... But that has nothing to do with you. No, but I, right? instead of trying to control it, harness it, or change it, I got to listen to it. And yeah. I got to figure it, I got to figure an easier, softer way. Because sometimes we go, yeah. we butt heads and, you know... I, I will say that I, I am lucky that I have a partner in that situation yeah. because he steps has in. more patience. He steps in. But you can have more patience. That's what I think I'm saying is like you can make that choice, have more patience. Well, I don't want to compare your daughter to my dog, but I had to do that. And I never thought I, as a matter of fact, I put it out on the internet that you can, somebody take this dog. I mean, that's how, that's how I, I'm not capable. And I didn't even think I was an animal person. So again, it becomes a metaphor. It's symbolic for life. Is like, I can do that. And I said that I couldn't. It just is a real exercise of a muscle that we don't work. Yeah. Because we're so used to doing things a certain way and it's worked for us, worked in quotes. But then again, sometimes it doesn't. So what do you think? How are you as a parent? A parent? Yeah. You saw how I am with Chloe. Well, I, that's a connection for me, when my father left this world, yeah. it was the, a part of me. It didn't die. I was untethered yeah. because we came from somewhere together. Yeah. And, and that was actually Cubby. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, great author. author and, yeah. And Cubby great Selby. Guy, yeah. Um, said, you're from the place. You're, same, you're from the same place. Yeah. I actually, unfortunately, Frankie's. Got the, the you know the booger finger out over there to, to wrap it up. Not with poo. This <laughs> <No>. time booger. <laughs> so. We've got all the uh, disgusting uh, exactly <laughs> bodily functions. You know, and this is like a, this is like a part <laughs> two. Beautiful with, with, Ann. With, with to bring you back, you know, to really go further into us this, but the answer is in vibration, 
And, you know, I don't know that people say, oh, this is woo woo. It's not. And my vibration is everything. And that's how I'm not only as a parent, it manifests itself in everything. You practice the principles in all these, all your affairs. Yeah. All the print and the principles are the principles, no matter who's receiving them no, in every single case. So if my principle is turning things over, surrender, my own inventory, looking my part in things and all that, the results are so much better than they would have been with my control, manipulation, dominance, and any of that. And it doesn't even allow me, the breath does not allow me to do that. So it's it's just crazy how I'm watching this work. So the answer to, and this isn't a brag, I'm an amazing dad, like really, really. And I think that I think it is otherworldly, like you were talking about with your dad. And we could get into something that was probably, we'll get onto it off of, off of here maybe if you guys like follow both of us we'll we'll let you in on it if we have more followers <laughs> what's up what's up um yeah there's something to be said for otherworldly if you will mm -hmm. you know it's not of this you know um earth that you can feel it's not of this earth and no. that's what i that was the yeah. and i was very young i was 21 yeah and so the reality that I was, that there's something beyond us and that this, at some times, it doesn't cut it. This lifetime doesn't cut it. And that it, to, to be so young to have that kind of grief um, really changed me as an artist, as a, as a person. Mm. And I reflect on it a lot as a mom. Mm. Because what was it that my father gave me that was so special was that unconditional love and that's just secret to your turnaround yeah there it is that's what it's still standing great way to wrap it up and <laughs> even using the title of the show still, still standing. standing up jenica i love you and they will love, I you. love you follow how do we follow Let's you vibrate how do we <laughs> oh, it's such an amazing thing to have this vibration and frequency to live like this is absolutely it's something no one ever teaches you they don't teach it in school yeah, they don't. Most parents don't teach don't it. Your teach dad taught it through. Your dad taught it, but that's very rare. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you. How do we get a hold of you? Or, uh, at Jenica Berger on Instagram, or um, I live in Culver City. Jenica with two N's. One N. Jack. By the way, that was not me. I thought it was one end, and, one I, end. and this is one of those things where you let other people act. You you empower someone else to like they're the smarter one. It's so much one end. If I put it in my cell phone, if I say your name into my text to talk, it only has one end, and someone spelled it with two ends. It's either Jack or Frankie. Oh wait, I just thought of something. What'd you think of? Follow at Great Taste Catering. That's a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to follow you there because I don't yeah, think you I, gotta I, eat the I, don't food. Th I don't think I do. Could, will you go no, all you the don't. way out to me where I live? Yeah, we go all everywhere. We you deliver. Do not. On, yeah. And what and what's so great is that you can freeze it. So it's gourmet food. No. Priced right and has many ounces. And then you use it. You can eat it more than one day. Oh, I love this. And that's why it was so funny that he was trying to do like one nice meal. And I was like, no. We need meals. I am getting the war. tonight. No, not tonight. Tonight I'm busy. Tomorrow I'm gonna get mac and cheese. My kids love mac and cheese. I'm gonna from you. Well, you Will have you to deliver it. Yeah, we have to deliver. What's what's today? Wednesday. Tuesday. We Tuesday. So you gotta order it for next week, and you uh, get fifty percent off with the code Jen Fantastic. <laughs> Jenica, thanks for being here. I yes, love you. Love and, you. And I love everybody love who's, you. Everybody who is supporting love us. You. Listen, I don't make any money with this. This is all coming out of my pocket. If there's right. a plea to tell other people, it doesn't cost you anything, but it might help if we get a few more listeners, downloads, whatever you want to call them, viewers. If you get a few more, then maybe some money will come our way, okay? And uh, so that's it. That's my plea to you. 